king, but I too have a dream. So when I speak, listen. We are set up by the system and systematic visions. One out of three black men are in prison and the curriculum in black schools lack intellectualism. In addition, we are always in competition with one another, but all the whites, Mexican and Chinese do is help each other. They come over to America to start businesses and we're worried about cars, shoes, and clothes to make appearances. This principle is beginning to get a little sickening. When will we rise to be superior like the Great Lakes? Drown and demolish every obstacle in our way. So I'll leave this with everyone to say we are in need of a change. So let's start today. Hello, I'm Nancy Lopez with Community Communications Cooperation Update. In honor of Black History Month, we have a special guest for Black History Month, which is a special time in February for Delaware, for the nation, and for the world. John, welcome. John Watson, welcome. Tell us. I, I had to chuckle on that. <laughs> Do you think there should be a Black History Month? N not, no, not anymore. No, not in night. In 1926, Carter Woodson started the whole thing with, uh, with Black History Week. Then in 1976, it, the government switched it to 19 uh, to uh, to a Black History Month. Okay, well that's nice enough, and they and we have it at a certain time in February because of the birthdays of uh, of the president, President uh, Lincoln, uh, President Lincoln, and one other person, I, f I forget the other name, but it doesn't make any difference. The point is, they wanted to make sure it was very important time uh, for us. And it seems to me that at this particular point, we've got black history being taught in our schools, okay? You got black, black history taught in the schools, then why do you have to have black history out here every year for a month you have Black History Month. But hold so that thought. See. Wait, hold that thought, John. So we're teaching black history in the schools. Are we teaching the complete information of black history? Well, so that, doesn't that make it necessary to have Black History Month? That was, no, you can, black history, what we should be doing, as I said before, I don't think we need Black History Month. We shouldn't, put it this way, we shouldn't need Black History Month. Black history should be taught properly in the schools. They are doing it already, so then why do it again for one particular month? So you're it, saying it would, seem to me, it, would seem, it would seem to me, it would seem to me that black history, when you're talking about American history, American history and black history, for me anyway, they are the same. Because without a black history, the United States of America, this great country of ours, would not be this great country of ours. So now we have, they're teaching American history and then black history. Why separate the two? Why is it that we have to always, I shouldn't say always, but it seems to me it's always, why do we always have to separate something in the black community, separate it from everything else in the country? I know, but you know, experts say that we're, they're not, the schools are not, the, the, the uh, youth in the schools, particularly grade school to, or even, you know, uh, younger to, kin to high school, are not being taught the proper black history information. Well, since they know that, then they should be told that they should stop doing what they're doing and do it the right way. If, so they're, not, if they're not doing it properly, okay, fine. Do it properly, and that way, one month. See, how can you do in one month of the year what you shouldn't be doing for 12 months out of the year? You see what I'm saying? We can't do it all in just one month. The, the kids go back to school, then how are they going to remember all of this stuff? That stuff, what we are talking about, and yeah, we do end up doing a lot of things about black history that we should be doing in schools. We do that during Black History Month, but those things should be there all the time. So during because the, they're not during there. the other 11 months of the but year. Because they're not there during the school year, the complete information of black history 
then there has to be a Black History Month. No, there doesn't have to be a Black well, History you Month. You All you need to do is make sure that Black History is taught properly, like American History is taught. We don't have American History Month. What do we do? We teach American History the proper way in our schools, 12 months out of the year. Then why can't we have a Black History at the same time? See, I, I, no, why I, I is, why I, is it that people don't see black history and American history being the same? When you are talking about American history, how can you, you leave black history out? It's just American history. Well, like, as I said before, without having this great country of ours, there would be no black history. So wouldn't it be safe to say to you that until they revamp the history books in the United States, then we do need Black History Month. No, my question is, why haven't they revamped the Christian books? The history I mean, books? the history, I said Christian books. The history books in our schools already. Everybody knows, it, just like we're sitting here talking, and, and we already know that things are missing when, the, when black history is being taught. Is things are missing when American history is being taught? Do they have to have a, a, an American History Month because things are missing? No. So then when they teach a black history in schools and in, the, and, and, and in, and in the, the colleges and universities, tell the whole story. All those kids in inner cities, small farm towns, kids dreaming of becoming scientists or doctors, engineers or entrepreneurs, diplomats, or even a president, they need a champion in Washington because the future will never have as many lobbyists as the status quo. Children don't have lobbyists the way oil companies or banks do, but it's the dreams of those children that will be our saving grace. That's what we fight for. That's why I need you, Iowa, to make sure their voices are heard, to make sure your voices are heard. And that's why we've come too far to turn back now. We've come too far to let our hearts grow faint. Now's the time to keep pushing forward. I'm Solo, student at Delaware State University, outreach coordinator of SWIU, 2014-2015, Mr. SWIU. My piece is about current events of society and historical events of black history. You see, I roll with the streams, roll with the punches, roll through the seams. More people die with more anger, it seems. More would decide to shoot first in the sink, lost in the sea. I see dark, that could be the skin. Lights would deceive. Tempt us to fight and I like what we see. I have a dream that I know the roots of my history. Spread love like Coretta Scott King, Douglas Tubman, and ACP. R&B and rap, it came from black kings. Royalty is in our blood and our skin. United within, here to defend the castle, put them in a lasso, wrap the strings around them. A peace is the way the Lord help us then. United will win. See, I still enjoy the peace when I get a little time to let it breathe. Roll to a spot, roll some tree, map out all the green I will receive. On this yellow big road to destiny, might see a unicorn in hell and weed. Still gotta scream, brother, RIP. Whether gang related murder or TV, it ain't hush. Oh, oh, I had to get that line right. I gotta say police, my fault, y'all. All right. Well, I'm feeling good, though. What's up? Want me again? <laughs> I got to say police on it. Yeah, current. Huh? All right, take my time some more. All right, all right. I'm Solo. I'm a student at Delaware State University, outreach coordinator of SWIU. 2014-2015, Mr. Swayu. My piece is about current events, the standpoint of society, and also black history. I roll with the streams, roll with the punches, roll through the seams. More people die with more anger, it seems. More would decide to shoot first than the sink, lost in the sea. I see dark, that could be the skin. Lights will deceive, tempt us to fight and I like what we see. I have a dream that I know the roots of my history. Spread love like Coretta Scott King, Douglas Tubman, and ACP. R&B and rap, it came from black kings. 
Royalty is in our blood and our skin. United within, here to defend. The castle, put them in a the lasso, wrap the strings around them. If peace is the way the Lord help us then, United will win. I still enjoy the peace. When I get a little time, I let it breathe. Roll to a spot, roll some treat. Map out all the green I will receive. On the yellow brick road to destiny. Might see a unicorn in hell of weed. Still gotta scream, brother R.I.P. Whether gang related murder or police. It ain't crazy to blame it on TV. We all subject to doing what we see. The root of learning should come from family. We all learn where the books are from the streets. We all yearn for the cook and find the things. You know, eat good while you look at what you gain. Martin Luther King said to have a dream, so the grind don't stop with death for him. Thank you. Educate all our kids and train all our workers and to create new jobs and rebuild our roads and bring back our troops and care for our veterans and broaden opportunity and grow our middle class and restore our democracy and make sure that no matter who you are or where you come from or how you started out, what you look like, who you love, what your last name is, here in America you can make it if you try. That's what we're fighting for. And Iowa, after all the months of campaigning, after all the rallies, after the millions of dollars of ads, it all comes down to you. It's out of my hands now. It's in yours. All of it depends on what you do. When you step into that voting booth tomorrow, it's just a, a remarkable thing, the way our democracy works. And, 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 and at a certain point, all this effort and all these campaign rallies, and then it just comes down to each of us as citizens. So, I mean, everybody knows the whole story. People know that. You see, what, what the, as, we, as you said before, what's missing there, we have it here during this month. But why is it, this, is it a secret? We have, it, we have it for 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 thirty days out of the year. For we have it for one month. Big big fat secret. We shouldn't be doing that. We should be telling the children all the time what really goes on. So, what do you think to our viewers? Do you think that the history books in the United States should be revamped and add the information, correct information, and complete information regarding Black history, and? Uh, either uh, downsize or eliminate Black History Month? Or should we keep Black History Month until the history books are revamped? I'd like to know from you. You're here on Community Communications Cooperation Update. I'm Nancy Lopez with John Watson. John, uh, you have- And I'm had, sure a lot of the people are going to be on your side, but I think some of them are going to be on my side. Okay, let's talk about your experience with a one Barbara Johns and the uh, board versus the, uh, uh, the, I'm sorry, Brown versus the, the Board of Education. Tell us about your experience with that. That was quite an experience. Now, I, I went to R.R. Moton High School, well, uh, elementary school, and then R.R. Moton High School uh, back in way, oh, almost 100 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> I won't tell you. Well, I got all the gray hair, you know, I've been around a couple of years. Well, anyway, we, we had a nice school. It was built for somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 students. But little by little by little, more black, more black people came to the community and more children. And pretty soon, we had about 500 students. Now you've got a, a, you've got a, got a, uh, a school not with enough classrooms for 500 students. Some days, we were, having our, we were having our classes in the auditorium. Can you imagine, I'm in the auditorium at one class, and you're in the auditorium with a teacher teaching you something else, and somebody else is someplace else, and someone else being taught by another teacher. Can you imagine trying to get your lesson when there's three, 
three lessons being taught at the same time. Then sometimes the lessons were taught on the buses. And if it was nice weather, sometimes the lessons were taught outside on, on the lawn and so forth. So it was getting to be pretty bad. And, and so to make this long story short, uh, one day Barbara Johns came to us and she, she was a young lady that was very quiet. And the, the funny thing about it is I didn't really know her very well. I knew her cousins and they had left. I didn't know her very well. So in the but interest of time, John, was, because we're almost but, going but into she came, it. She came to us and said, we got to do something about this. She wanted us to be part of a, she wanted us to be part of a, a uh, strike committee, right? A strike, strike committee? Are we running out of time here? Yes, we are almost running out of time, but well, I want to go She wanted just us to run out of the strike committee so that we can get something done. So eventually, we had, we, had to get the we had to get the principal out of the school. So she convinced me, she convinced me to go home and call the principal and get him out of the school. And it's a long, 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 long story. I didn't want to go. I had to pretend I was a businessman downtown be telling him some students were running around and so forth. And I went and I did that even though I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable. And then uh, what happened was she got all of the students in the auditorium and told them what we were doing. And 450 students walked out of the school. Now this led for your school to be part of the lawsuit. Uh, yes, and then we called the NAACP told them what we had done, what we needed to do, and so forth. We needed a better school. And they said, well, we only go for desegregation. And so we voted for desegregation. Eventually, they convinced us it had to be desegregation because we, we weren't going for desegregation. We had great teachers and a, and a good principal. We, we wouldn't think about that. But we saw that, well, yeah, that's a good idea. And our parents, and there was a vote, the whole town in the black, the whole black, the black community in the town had to be in favor of it too before the NAACP would come in and take the case. And people thought that the majority of black people in the community wouldn't be in favor of, uh, uh, you know, uh, of that uh, and because they might lose their jobs. Well, they were in favor of it and most of them did not lose their jobs. Okay? So it worked out pretty well and eventually the Brown versus the Board of Education, uh, the Supreme Court passed in favor of desegregation in 1954. And from that day until this, from time to time, we got a chance to go to visit with the president at the White House. And, and you visited uh, Obama and I, recently. I visited uh, this time. Uh, no, last year was the last time I've done it. We've got to wait 10 more years before <laughs> we do it again. Every 10 years since 1954, we go and visit at the White House. And all of the other times, the first